Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Small Engines Questions and Answers for Friday, February 25th, 2011. I want to start and thank everybody who sent in monetary gifts to my YouTube channel. Also, I want to thank all my new subscribers for subscribing to my videos. And I also want to thank those who regularly comment on the videos. It's really appreciated. A lot of you guys have been asking me why is there mostly snowblower videos right now? Well, it's because here where I live in Canada, it's winter five months out of the year. And right now it's almost the end of February, so we have another good month of winter. And all my summer stuff is buried in another shed outside. I don't really want to take that stuff out right now because it's going to take up room in the shop here that I don't really have right now. I've got a lot of stuff lined up for the spring and summer, so just keep watching. Now my first question, a YouTuber has an old Tecumseh engine from 1979. He also mentions that the muffler has never been taken off since 1979. His main concern, however, is that the bolts might break in the engine. Well, the likelihood of the bolts breaking in the engine is very high. Sometimes they may come off easy even though they've been on for over 30 years. But if the motor has been subjected to a lot of melting snow on it, if it's been stored outside especially, it's even more likely that the bolts will break in the head of the engine. Even motors that aren't 30 years old, sometimes the bolts break in them. You just got to go real easy when you take them off. Go one way, then back one way. Like go back and forth a bit. Very slowly you can spray a bit of penetrating oil in the back here. But if the bolts are fused inside the engine, then that may be futile. Here's where you're actually taking the bolts out of, is these two holes here. Now if the bolts break on you inside the engine, don't worry about it. I do have a video that shows how to drill and tap broken exhaust bolts on Tecumseh motors. What I'm going to do is post the link to that video underneath this video here, so you can access it easily. Don't worry about it, you're going to be able to fix it if the bolts break in there. So on the second question for today, YouTuber has an older still, a 032 chainsaw that he's working on. He says it's got severe kickback, so when he goes to start it, kicks back. And sometimes that can pull on your hand, your wrist, or your arm, even your shoulder, and it can be a bit painful if the kickback is really strong. He's wondering what's causing this. He's also checked the flywheel key, and apparently it's good. If the flywheel key is broken, what that can do is throw your timing off, and then when you go to start it, it's going to kick because it's not firing at the proper time. Now, he was also told that if the cylinder walls are scored on his saw, that can cause kickback. Well, I've never personally heard of that. I've never experienced it in all the years I've been working on small engines. What that could do, a scored cylinder wall, is that your saw would have no compression. It would not kick back. So, the only suggestion I can give to you right now without seeing your saw is check the point gap. Now this is not a set of points from a still 032 chainsaw, but the same principle will apply. I'm going to show you on this set of points here what I mean by the gap being too close or too large. So when the points are at their most highest, it's the gap in between the points. Usually I'll put 20 thousandths of an inch in between the gap here with the feeler gauge, but if the gap's too small, let's say it barely opens like this, that can cause a lot of kickback when you go to start your chainsaw. And if it does start, it's probably not going to run right. Now if the gap's too large, it could cause the same problem as well, or you may not even have spark. What I would do if I was that YouTuber, is I would go back in, take the flywheel off. I would also run a piece of 400 emery sandpaper in between the points to clean them off. And then I would regap them, because over the years what happens is this part here on the points gets used or worn out. And then it closes the gap because it's not opening it enough because all the materials wore off. You can put a bit of lithium grease here, just a tiny bit, and there should be like a felt in there as well that rubs on the lobe. You can grease that a little bit. It's going to prevent wear here. Then your gap's not going to go out of time. So try that. I'm pretty sure that's your problem. Also, while you're at it, you may want to check the compression on your chainsaw. If the cylinder walls are scored, it's going to be really hard to start if it starts at all. My next question, a YouTuber is asking me if it's normal to have a bit of play in the Tecumseh crankshaft. The play I'm talking about is when you pull the crankshaft back and forth in this direction. And there's a little bit in there. Here's an older Tecumseh engine here. I'm going to check the play on this one. This one even has more. Here's an older Briggs 5 horsepower engine. I'm going to check the play in this one too. Now the Briggs here has a little bit, but not as much as the Tecumseh. Now all these engines were good apparently, so I know that 
It's been like that for a while. There hasn't been any problems with that motor here. So I guess it's normal. It's a bit odd, but I've never had a problem with my engines, even though they have that shaft play. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate all you guys watching my videos. I just printed off a whole bunch of questions that I received from you guys. So just be patient. It may be a while before I get to answering all the questions. Have yourselves a great weekend.